Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I'm back with another Tinkercad Circuits Project. Friends, today we're going to learn how to use that remote control, so let's get cracking. So let's begin by clicking Circuits, and we want to create a new circuit. When it launches, let's start by changing the name. This is going to be LED Remote, and I'm going to put my initials after it. Please do that with yours as well. For this part, I need you to find the breadboard, click and set it out, and then we also need to find the Arduino, click and set it out on this side. We need to find a fancy component, the remote. If you type REM, you can see remote shows up, and we need this remote, which I'm going to set down and then move below, and then we need this sensor, which I'm going to put right on this end. This is a good time to remind you to pause, complete the steps, then return to the video, leaving one set of pin areas available. If we look at this little guy, he's got a power, a ground, and an out. The out is the one that we have to take care of first, or we're going to choose to take care of first, and it needs to connect to this wire right here. Then we're going to go all the way up. If you click and then come across and then click again, we want to connect to number three. Once you connect these in, you can stretch them so they look nice and crisp. And then you can also pick a color for that. I'm going to choose purple for mine just so that it stands out. The next one is that ground. I'm going to just go from here to here. Whenever we do a ground wire, let's make it black. And then the last one is power. And we're going to go from power to power. And we're going to make it red. Over here, let's take the ground, click, 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 and connect it to this minus sign. So that row just got its power. And we're gonna make it black. Once you've got these in place, you can click again and get those curves as nifty as you want. They don't have to be perfect. It doesn't change anything. It just looks a little nicer when you're done. Let's do the same thing with this five volt and come across and connect it to the positive and always make your power lines red. I'm gonna straighten that up just a hair. You can see it gives you the crosshairs when you've got them lined up. I'm gonna make my remote control turn on and turn off some LEDs. So cancel out the word remote, bring out an LED, and I'm gonna put mine in rows three and four, leaving the row F available. And then I'm gonna connect the flat side, which is the cathode, to the negative rail. Same rule, we're going to make that a black wire because it is going to the ground. Next, I'm going to bring out a resistor, and I'm going to connect it from the anode across the middle of the breadboard. I'm going to take it, and I'm going to make it a single ohms instead of kilo ohms, and I want it to be 100. We are going to connect this little guy to pin 5. So I'm going to click up above, close, and then I'm gonna come down to that wire. I'm actually gonna click twice so that it bends. And then I'm gonna stretch this over so that it's nice and straight. I'm gonna leave this wire green, and then I'm gonna click on my LED, and I want this LED to be green. All right, friends, this next part is the important part that makes this all happen. In the description of the video is a link that will get you to this remote sketch. When you select all this code, and the best way is to hit edit and select all, or control A, then I need you to do edit copy, and then you've got to return to Tinkercad, and we've got to add that code. This is essential, right now it's in blocks mode, you've got to switch to just text mode. It'll ask do you want to, and you've got to say continue and yes. There is a little bit of code in here, you're going to backspace and delete all that, and then you're going to right click and paste. This code is essential. You can't miss any parts or it'll be broken. Let me real quickly explain what we've got here. Pin three is that receiver. It had to be what we call a PWM pin. And then we named a variable, receiver pin, and we've got some tools that decode the results. We've got, we've got four pins turned on, five, six, seven, and eight. We've only connected pin five so far, and then we've connected it to a key. This is called button one, 
and that turns it high, which is on, and then below that, button two makes it low. There is a neat little thing called a serial monitor that shows us what's happening, and right now you can hit start simulation. It takes a moment to initialize, and then I'm gonna zoom out on the scroll wheel and then grab this white space so I can move it so we can see the buttons better. And now when we click the number one, our LED turns on. If yours does not see which wire you missed, press number two and it will turn it off. Those are the two commands, digital to write number five high, see how it's connected to pin five, digital to write number five low, that turned it off. That is how your remote control works. To continue, we need to hit stop simulation, and then I'm gonna hide the code so we have more room to work. I'm gonna bring out another LED. I'm gonna drop it in this row, move it down so it lines up, and then we're just gonna do the same steps. Black wire, because it's going to the ground. I'm gonna bring out another resistor. We're gonna change that resistor to 100 and make sure we switch to ohms. And then I'm gonna do the wire connection. This time it's gonna be from number six. This time I'm gonna connect right to the corner. I'm gonna pick my color, which I want this one to be red. So I'm gonna make the wire red as well. And then watch this, if you double click, you can make an extra little bump like we did last time and we can bend it afterwards. If you wanted that up above, you can raise them up to just make it look a little more nifty as well. Since we've wired it up, let's give it a quick test. I'm gonna move everything so I can see the numbers. Hit start simulation. Remember from our code, this will be on one and two, this will be on three and four. So there's one, there's three, two shuts that one off, four shuts the other one off. And that's all based on this code right here. Notice when I click these buttons, I'm gonna click button eight. See how it gives me a number? That is the code for button eight. So later if we wanna program button eight, we can put it in this list. If you look, 166196.23 is not in the list. So we only went through button six in our codes. Let's stop that simulation, arrange our screen, hide the code by clicking on the code box and build our last one super fast. I'm gonna make this one yellow. I'm gonna bring in the same parts, resistor on this side. I'm gonna connect the cathode to the negative. Once again, make that wire black. We're gonna go from pin seven, and this time I got lots of room to go above. I'm gonna click again. I'm gonna come down here and click, and then I'm gonna connect it down below. The nice thing about that is it's easy to grab it afterwards and straighten it up. They don't have to be straight, but it's just kinda nice. Since I'm making this one the yellow LED, I'm gonna match the wire color. If you look at the bands on the resistors, you can see I forgot to switch this one. I'm gonna change it to ohms and make it 100. Let's start that simulation and make sure we've got all three working again. Move the screen down so I can see the numbers. New one is five and boom, it works. Six shuts it off. Stop simulation, let me bring out that code. All right, friends, we've got three working LEDs, but now I wanna challenge you to make more LEDs work. Let me show you real quickly how to do this so that you can keep building this and make it more and more awesome. All right, friends, so make sure you can see your code. And then we are gonna find button seven. We stop at button six. So when we start the simulation, give it time to initialize. And then on the serial monitor, click button seven and look for its code. See how it's 165, 86, 983? We need to copy that. We need to stop the simulation. We need to go down to where button six is and below it press enter and temporarily paste your code. We're gonna use that in a moment. Now copy all of the button six line. Make sure that you've got from the word case to after the semicolon, choose copy. 
press enter and then paste that in. It's good to backspace so they're lined up, press and enter so there's a space, and then we simply gotta take our button seven code and cut it, I'm gonna use control X, and paste it where the old button six number was. So now button seven exists. We need to change the label though. This is how it prints a seven. We're gonna type button seven here, and then we don't have it connected to anything yet, but this is where I'm gonna challenge you to connect this to button eight, and then I want you to make it so that this one turns it on, so we're gonna type high. We are not connected to a fourth LED yet, but that's what your challenge is. Make one that turns it on, and make one that turns it off as well. You can use all the buttons now that you know this technique where you get the button's number and then you simply create the new line for it. When we hit start simulation, everything runs like it's supposed to. Button seven will not turn anything on, but check it out. Now it does say seven on the screen. If you get an LED hooked up over here to number eight and then you press that button, you will actually get lights. I'm gonna stop the simulation. It saves automatically, which is awesome. And friends, you've just created your own device that uses a remote control and an Arduino. Friends, if you create something epic, please take the time to hit share and generate a link, copy it, and shoot it to me. I am on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or you can also find me on Gmail at HLModTech. Show me the cool things you're making. Show me the awesome things that you've taken this strategy and used it to create. Of course, friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you got a question, comment, or suggestion, add it down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button, and last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.